Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for Neat and Tangled. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna take one background and make two cards. I'm keeping these cards really simple so that the focus remains on that colorful 80s inspired background. <laughs> The 80s called, they want their colors back. Um, but I thought that this would be a great way to kind of show you how you can maximize your time in the craft room. So I am starting out with the quilted background stamp. This is a red rubber foam mounted stamp and I love these background stamps from Neat and Tangled. I'm inking it up in some Copic friendly black ink and stamping it onto not only my hands, <laughs> but also some Nina Solar White Heavyweight cardstock. And once I have my cardstock placed onto the background stamp, I'm gonna cover that with a piece of scrap paper and I'm gonna keep one hand in place as I kind of rub all over the back of that um, cardstock that's placed onto the stamp to transfer all of that ink onto my background here. So that gives me my stamped background and now I'm going to start adding some color and I am keeping the color super simple on this background. The whole point of these cards is to maximize your time. I know that not a lot of you have a ton of time to spend in the craft room. So if I can create one background and make two cards out of it, that makes my time go further and by keeping the coloring really simple, that's going to make my time go even further. So I've chosen some really bright colors and I've colored the stripes all exactly the same. I didn't try to mix it up, I just kept it really simple. There's no shading on those colors whatsoever. It's one flat color. And once I colored all of those little lines where those squares are kind of divided up, I took a T1 Copic marker and I went along the border of that just to give this background a little bit of dimension. And then I blended it out with a colorless blender. And this gives me my completed background here and now I can cut this right down one of these lines here and create two pieces out of it. So I'm gonna put it into my trimmer and I am using the rail of my trimmer to see exactly where I'm going to cut. A trimmer like this that kind of gives you a line where you can visually see where you're cutting is one of my favorite tools to have in the craft room because it's helpful for projects like this or for cutting down sentiment strips. It's just really, really helpful. So I think you should have one. <laughs> so once I've cut that down, I'm gonna take one of these pieces and I'm gonna start working with it to create my card. I'm creating a card base out of some linen cardstock. I've cut it to four and a quarter by 11 inches and scored it at five and a half inches to create a top folding A2 size card base. And then I'm gonna start working on my sentiment. Now my sentiment is old school Neat and Tangled. It's really not that old school. <laughs> but it's an older product from Neat and Tangled and it is this Hooray die set. Now this also has a coordinating stamp set. And when you combine the stamps and the dies, there are so many ways to use this. And I absolutely love this Hooray sentiment because you can use it for so many things. Today I'm die cutting it from some black cardstock and I'm holding my die in place on the cardstock as I run it through my Gemini Junior die cutting machine and I'm just using a little bit of the ThermoWeb purple tape for that. And I die cut that from the black cardstock three times and now I am taking the outline or the shadow portion of this die set and I'm cutting it from some vellum. Now I've die cut this three times from black cardstock so that I could kind of layer these up and give it a little bit of dimension. And in order to do that, I'm gonna use some liquid glue along the back of these die cuts. So once I've put some dots of liquid glue all over the back of this, I'm gonna line it up with another layer of this and kind of make sure that they're all pressed together where they're lined up. And then I'm gonna add my third layer here. Once again, just adding little dots of liquid glue to this die cut, and then I'll take and stack those on top of each other. Layering this up is gonna give some dimension and add interest to my card. And I, if you know me at all, I like dimension on my cards. And I tend to go a little bit overboard with foam adhesive and dimension, but that's just my thing, okay? <laughs> if you wanna skip out on some of the layers, you absolutely could. Now once I have those three black layers kind of layered up there, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more liquid glue to the back of this and add it onto that vellum shadow piece. 
And I really love using vellum for these shadows because it helps it to kind of pop off the card more. You see the sentiment, the die cut sentiment a little bit more, but it's not adding another element of color or pattern or anything to the card. And once I have that centered up there, I'm going to just hold it in place to make sure it bonds really well. Now for the stamped portion of my sentiment, I am going to actually use this banner sentiment and it is from the Barnyard Buddies stamp set. But it says, herd, it's your birthday. And I didn't want the herd part because it's spelled like a herd of animals. <laughs> and I didn't feel like it went with this 80s vibe card here. So I went ahead and just masked that sentiment portion, just that little one little word off with a piece of purple tape and then I inked up my stamp. I removed the purple tape and now I'm gonna stamp this onto some vellum that I've treated with my powder tool. I'm gonna use some silver embossing powder and I'm gonna heat set that, but you're gonna see because I masked off just that one word, I have all of the banners still intact and now I have a sentiment that says, it's your birthday. And I'm just gonna tuck that empty or blank portion of the banner behind the hooray die cut sentiment to kind of disguise that and make it look really purposeful. If you don't have a die cut sentiment to kind of disguise this behind, you could always add like a little heart or a balloon die cut shape there to kind of fill in that area. So in order to adhere that, I just used a little more liquid adhesive and now I have my sentiment ready to go on my card front. Now I had this on my card front and I just felt like it needed a little something more. So I've prepped the surface of this entire background piece that I've created with a powder tool. And now I'm taking my Versamark ink and I'm just tapping it along the edges. I'm gonna add a little bit of silver border to this. It's very, very slight in real life, but it does help it to kind of pop off the paper and gives the illusion of more layers than what's actually there. And it just gives a little bit more shine and brings in that silver element once again. So I'm just sprinkling on the embossing powder and now I can heat set that. And in real life, you can see this. I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick it up in the pictures, but it is just the finest metallic edge. Now, if you want more of a bold metallic edge, you could angle your stamp pad, your ink pad, to where more of it kind of touches the surface of the cardstock, but I just wanted that really fine edge. So I kept it kind of at a 90 degree angle as I was pressing it to the edge of the cardstock. Now here you're gonna see that I have a confetti background that I'm placing this on, and I decided later I wasn't a fan of the confetti in the background. So I went ahead and added this to a plain card base rather than a confetti card base. But I kept the rest of the elements the same. I added a little strip of black cardstock along the top of this pattern paper just to give it a finished look. And then I will add my entire die cut and stamped sentiment on using some foam adhesive to give a little more dimension. And I finished my card off by embellishing with just a few enamel hearts that tie in with all of those colors. So now I'm gonna start working on my second card. And truth be told, I started working on the second card before I was done with the first card, which is why you're seeing a partial card <laughs> up in that left-hand corner. But it kind of, the inspiration for the second card hit me when I was in the middle of the first card, so I had to go with it. So once again, I trimmed down that other piece that I had created and I just trimmed it into a strip and I used the lines that are already on the background stamp to guide me as I cut that down and I adhered it to a piece of linen cardstock. Now I'm gonna take this stamp here and it is from the Thanks So Much, I believe is what it's called, I'll have it linked below, stamp set and it is kind of designed to go along with the gift box that Neat and Tangled released at the end of last year. It is a really beautiful Art Deco inspired stamp set and I am stamping it onto some vellum and then adding some silver embossing powder once again and I'm just gonna heat set that. And I'm gonna keep everything on this card almost identical to the first card. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. I did uh, kind of change up the position of my pattern here on this card front but I'm using a lot of the same elements from the first card. That saves me time because I already have the stuff out 
And it also keeps me from having to feel like I have to come up with a whole new design idea here. I'm just kind of taking elements from the first card and reimagining them just a tad bit to make this card a little bit different. I've used the same black cardstock strips along the edge of that background pattern that I created. I used the same stacked up hooray die cut element along with that embossed area there. And this time, instead of mounting it on the shadow piece, I mounted it on this stamped and embossed piece that I just created to add a little bit more metallic uh, shine to this card. And then I'm gonna just take this entire thing. I added my hooray on there with a little bit of foam adhesive, and then I added that entire panel onto my card front using a little more foam adhesive. Now both of these cards I finished off with some enamel hearts and also a layer of the tonic aqua shimmer pin over the top of those die cuts and that gives it a little bit of shine, actually a lot of shine because <laughs> my um, sparkle in my pin is super concentrated right now and I'm okay with that. <laughs> I say the more shine the better. And that completes my two cards for today featuring the brand new quilted background stamp from Neat and Tangled. And hopefully this gave you an idea for kind of maximizing the time that you have to craft to create more than one project at one time. So if you spend a little bit of time creating a simple background, you can cut that down and make more than one card out of it. And then just use the same elements in different ways to create two cards that are a lot alike, but different also. And I really hope you'll keep these ideas in mind the next time that you go to create. As always, I will have links to the featured products used in these projects in the description at YouTube, but head on over to the coordinating blog post. I'll have that linked below. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by and spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so you won't miss any of the card making and paper crafting video tutorials here. Thanks again for stopping by and hanging out with me today. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.